think we're live. So it says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. So all right, awesome. Okay, Jessica, thank you so much for yeah. uh, for doing this with me. I appreciate. Thank you it. for the invite. I feel you know, like I'm part of some exclusive club now. Well, yeah, you are. You're, you're a <laughs> member now. In the in the um, in the, in, in you know, I had a I forget who it was the other day. Somebody did say, "Hey, why is it temporary book club?" <laughs> and, and you you brought it up before, like, "Hey, this is more of a permanent thing." Yeah, and the well, reason is now, yeah, yeah, but but it's more of you know, like a book club, like you're meeting with the same people um, once a month or when, however often right, you meet, right. but this one's temporary because it's just me and you this time. Gotcha. And then gotcha. next time it'll be something. And then hopefully, you know, I'll have your back, but you don't have to, nobody is. Cause I, I don't know. Have you been in book clubs? I was just going to say, when you said that, that's like, that is actually one of my, you know how when you do like icebreakers at an office or something and they make you do like two truths and a lie or something. Right. One of my truths is that I have never been never part been of a book club. And anybody who knows me thinks- You read a ton. Yeah, yeah, like there's no, you know, of course you, nope, I have never participated in a book club. I would have guessed you had too. Mm -hmm. I, I would I would not, but the thing is same with me is I've tried them. I've never been in one that I haven't organized. Yeah. So, so kind of I've never been in one, but I've tried to get them together and um, it's just so hard to- you know, it's just, just for two people to read the book. Like you said, before right. we, 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 we went live is you almost didn't finish. Well, imagine when you have six people going to a book club, then right. a lot of people could just take the out. Cause like, I don't right. know, uh, other people's going to finish it. So I find that they just, it's in my, in my situations, they've never really worked to the point where we're having decent conversations or they just get, and I'm fine with like talking about other stuff, but they just, you know, you talk about the book for the first 10 minutes and, right. then, and then you're the talking about families and football yeah. and whatever. Yeah. So that, that's why I, I went with this route is just like, well, I got one person, we read the same book and we can, we right. can and we're not talking about anything else. Right. And, and the thing is, and I'm sure you feel the same way when you're reading a book, you just want to let, I don't, I just want to let some of it out. I mean, I got to talk about this to oh, somebody yeah. and I end up talking to it about somebody that never read the book and doesn't give two shits about it right it's me talking to my husband every night and he's right like, a little over his head like uh-huh that's great honey I'm that's so kim thrilled. oh that's so funny i sit in my chair and kit the bed's right there and kim will be over there and i'll be like this book i'll be like let me just read this little bit to you and she's just like stop don't 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 yeah yeah and yeah. it's funny um it glazes over like oh yeah no but it's funny i years ago when I was, I did a kind of a take one on this thing. Yeah. I, this book has been a, a, one of my favorites for a while. And I asked, Kim, Kim doesn't read, but I asked her to do this book. Yeah. I asked her to do this book That's and she actually read it. The deep end. No, I know. I think I messed it up a little bit. <laughs> She's like, I, and now I will never read it. Yeah. And now I'm never doing it again. Right. Okay, this, I, this light, fluffy little, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look bad, but yeah, when you read it, it's pretty well, that's dense. what got me, Mike. That my problem is I got arrogant because mm -hmm. I am usually a, a crazy fast reader to the point that, and this was very humbling, to the point that sometimes I get competitive about it because I've gotten into a thing where like about once a quarter, every three months or so, I'll post on Facebook, like, I here's my yep. list of what I read. The and I love the conversations that start, and I have a list longer than I could ever actually get to of people that are like, Oh, if you like this, you should read this. And Oh, I, mm -hmm. you know, I love the conversation that ensues. Right. So this shows up and I was like, Psh, it's like not even 200 pages. This will take me like 45 minutes. Right. That no. did not turn out to, no. <laughs> to be the case. And the worst part is, I think I said to you earlier today, like I'm, I'm so I'm in some ways, maybe it's good. It's fresher. I'm so mad that I didn't have it. And I never read books twice. I'm like, even if it's a book I love, it's like, chuck it over my shoulder on to what's next. I get really competitive with, with how much I can read, which is a yep. stupid thing to get competitive. <laughs> like I would have loved the chance to read this again because I found myself, I kept wanting, like he drops, you know, he drops these little 
pieces of information on you. And then, and it, and it reshapes everything that you've already read. And so I found myself so many times like, oh, wait, I want to go back and reread these couple of paragraphs where he talked about this. And I was like, there's no time. Just you, like, you nailed it. No, you nailed it. I, I, I never went back and read books either for the longest Barely. time. Yeah. And yeah. And then I started to, but that's why. And it's not a, mo- a lot of books I don't, and I don't have any, any will to, yeah. but books like this, where you go back and, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Cause there's a big part that I think tells me about what the whole book's about that I missed probably the first two times through. Yeah. And then this time I'm reading it and it was, and I could be wrong, you know, sometimes yeah. you take things, but it was like a slap in my face, at least like, Oh, he's telling me exactly what he's doing here, but we're going to get to that. So I want you okay. to take a second and introduce yourself for me, Jessica. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Jessica Laughman. Um, I am in Columbus, Ohio, um, born and raised in Dayton, just south of Dayton, and spent a little bit of time in Raleigh, North Carolina, and a little bit more time in New York, and found my way back home, and um, actually kind of moved back to Dayton after 10 years in New York, not quite sure where I was going to go, what I was going to do, what was happening. I was um, freelancing at the time. So I at least had the flexibility of, I could kind of go anywhere. You're a writer. I am, which right. sounds sexy and fun. I don't write sexy and fun things. But I you write... had a blog. You have read parts of your blog before. You're <laughs> well, good which, at it. Which I used to, that was my creative outlet. I used to do that all the time. And then I started writing professionally and almost entirely stopped writing for fun. And, mm. and then I had a kid and time changes everything yeah. went away. So yeah. now basically the only thing I write is, is a yearly letter to him. Every oh, once in awesome. a while I'll, I'll throw something on there. But, um, so I actually rekindled some, I had, I had come back. This is almost 10 years ago. Now I had come back to Ohio, was living with my parents in my mid thirties, temporarily trying to figure out what I was going to do. And actually rekindled um, some old relationships from college, some sorority sisters. Um, We had a sorority sister pass away, which I think though the silver lining to that was, I think she loved kind of being the party planner and the reason that we all found our way back to back together Mm -hmm. again. And I ended up um, through one of those connections, getting a job in Columbus and moving here. And it's, it's, um, you know, it's crazy for me now to think that I've been, New York was such a big part of my life, but I've actually been back here in Columbus now longer than I was in New York, which is insane to think about because in my time here, I've, I've grown up, I've gone from being in my, you know, right early thirties to my mid forties. I got married. I had a kid. I like, <laughs> like I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> when did, what year did you move back to Columbus? I moved here in 2010. Gotcha. So okay, almost exactly 10 years. Right. And, and I was in New York for just under. And so what do you do? What do you, are you, what do you do for a career? Do you work right now? So I, or work, you... I do. Um, I, I work for, I won't even get into that. I, I, I work for a marketing department of a big risk management company. So cool. like I said, not super sexy stuff, but Turns out if you write things for big companies, they actually pay you for it, which there was you go. mind That's awesome. Um, Very cool. So yeah, so I had I had run the gamut, done a thousand different things in New York. I was acting for a little bit, I which does not pay the bills because they don't pay you to do that either. <laughs> no. um, but I actually ended up kind of falling back on my writing and realizing, oh, people will pay me to do this. So I had I had worked for a, a company there for a few years and started freelancing and and um then I blinked and I became a middle-aged Ohio soccer mom <laughs> it's yeah it's so cool I know it's crazy <laughs> and I do it Jessica Jessica you you're a DG right I, uh, yeah always, always, always a DG, DG right Little so Jessica and I, I'm friends with a lot you know we, we have mu- oh. a lot of mutual friends we had run into each other a lot mm-hmm. I didn't really know her very well um but we, I knew her to see her and, and knew yeah. a lot of her close friends. And then we'd run into, uh, and then when you moved back to Columbus, I'd see you at a um, Ohio State tailgate here or there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been to one of those in a couple of years, but I nope, got to like I I get back into that. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Business. I know. I feel like, well, you've got little ones too. I feel like mm-hmm. there's, there's that constant push and pull of like, I don't want to wish a moment away. And, and yeah. I only, I have a, a stepson who's 11 
Um, so I had him in my life for a few years and then my son just turned five and you know, you want to, you want to hold on to like every sure. second of it, but at the same time you, you catch yourself like, wait, three oh, years have been gone by since I've done this or right, that. Yeah. Just a couple more years. We can go to dinner in just a couple more years. We can yeah. we have neighbors down that are like their boys are in high school and they're, you know, they're out there driveway drinking and they've got their fire and they're always like, come. And I'm like, I, yeah, I gotta put them to know. bed. 8 30. <laughs> right, right. It's not even worth getting started sometimes, right? Right. So <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you. Um, so here's the back. And what usually I read the back of the book. This one right. doesn't give much. So I found a synopsis. Synopsis I'm gonna read too. Oh, good. Um, it says in this luminous new novel about love and loss and the unpredictable power of memory, John Banville introduces us to Max Morden, a middle-aged Irishman who has gone back to the seaside town where he spent his summer holidays as a child to cope with the recent loss of his wife. It is also a return to the place where he met the Graces, the well-heeled family with whom he experienced the strange suddenness of both love and death for the first time. What Max comes to understand about the past and about the indelible effects on him is at the center of this elegiac, gorgeously written novel among the finest we have ever had from this masterful writer. And so this is the book we're going to talk about today, The Sea by John Banville. It is a movie. I did not see the movie. I don't know. I've made it a point not to see the movie. I have not either. Yeah. Nor have I, I will fess up, nor have I, I have never read anything else by Banville. So this was my introduction to him. Did you like it? I, I did. I loved it. It was, um, I think I, going back to the conversation about how, you know, I'm, I'm used to kind of churning through things. And I think for the first few pages, I was almost frustrated because I felt like I was being held back because yeah. the language <laughs> is so dense and it requires right. so much. And, and then it was like, this is a, a funny comparison, but I almost, I almost thought of it as in those moments when my grandmother is telling me her stories, my grandmother just turned 93. <laughs> And the woman has got some stories. I mean, right. she can go. And at this point, I've heard most of them a few times. And every mm -hmm. once in a while, you know, you get into that like, come on, let's go. Moment. Right, right. Like, I know, you know, I know. And then you just sort of have to breathe into it and just say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take this as it comes and I'm gonna let it like wash over me a little bit and I'm just gonna be in it. And it's funny because I'm one of in the past couple of weeks, I've sat here while I'm working and listened to a few of the other podcasts, which I love. So I've had that in the back of my mind. And there was one where you guys were talking about now I can't remember which book it was, but you guys were talking about how you kept having to stop and look up words. Yeah, this one does that. Yeah. Which I rarely do. And because I was pressed for time, I was like, I can't, I can't keep stopping. And it, it was pulling me out of the narrative, which I mm -hmm. didn't love. So I, I fell into that too. I was like, this, he's, he's so descriptive and he's mm -hmm. so narrative that I thought if this was an, an older man sitting in front of me telling a story, even if I didn't know half of the words he was using, it, it almost didn't matter. And it, no. it, it added something to it. And there were times I where I didn't know if I, if I didn't understand what he was talking about because he was Irish or because he's of a different generation or just because he is a shit ton smarter than me. And he's, I use words like shit ton and he does not. <laughs> I think that's, you know, uh, Irish literature, I think just gets off on that a little bit. You know what I mean? They pride themselves on these, um, these words and terms that we don't know. Uh, I, I tried to get you through Ulysses by James Joyce a few times, but that's yeah. what it's known for is just having so many inside words and, 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 uh words that you you don't know unless you grab a dictionary right. that it is it's a struggle to get through um i love banville i have this is my banville stack right here i've read <laughs> quite banville a bit collection it is <laughs> but if you didn't know and he does write on a, in a different fashion he goes under the um uh, pen name uh benjamin black when he does um yeah. if you like mysteries i guess that's i what do that, yeah, so he writes under a different name, Benjamin Black. And and um, I'm not big into them, but from what I've read, they're they've I've, I've enjoyed them. They're okay. they're really good stuff. So another way to check out, and, and probably a faster read than these, <laughs> you know. But I, and I agree with you. I think the thing is with these, you have to know that you're getting in for it into it because of the prose, yeah. 
Yeah. He's setting a scene. Yeah. If you, from me, I just, and he talks about an artist. Remember, he, he's going back to this artist and he's actually supposed to be writing a book on this yeah. artist's life. Right. Um, that art in is a theme in his books. He must be big into some kind of art. So I think he's just trying to paint the picture in our minds as best as he can. Um, and, and at first, he yeah, I mean, oh, it, he does. It, it's beautiful. It's poetry. I mean, there's there's really not a tremendous amount by way of plot. I mean, this, the story is pretty is is pretty big. I mean, there's a couple of little things that come up and an, an ending that that perhaps you don't entirely see coming, but I mean, the, no, you're the right. depth, I mean, he'll spend a page describing a skirt or something. Right. I mean, like he, he, he's so, he pulls you so into this man's memory and into what he's, what, what stands out to him. And that was what was fascinating to me that it, it had very, very little motion in it. I mean, no, I agree. Yeah, you you got his feet. You felt how he was feeling when he was talking about all the you know the memories, like you said, or well, they were all pretty much memories. But um, you could feel him in, in both the description of what's around him, but also just, I guess, through his descriptions because they're all through Max's eyes. Yeah. You could actually not just see it, but you could feel how he was seeing it with emotion. Yeah, which is really hard to explain, but yeah. you know, once you read it, you, you you know it. Have you ever read any uh Virginia Woolf? I have. Yeah, like yeah. have you read To the Lighthouse? Um, yes, but like a thousand years ago. Yeah, that's uh -huh. what honestly that when I first read this book, it reminded me to the lighthouse. Uh, I think she has a whole chapter of just looking into a room, like literally just seeing the room open with like the windows open on the other side and breeze going through it, and there's a whole chapter and um. So it's I think such a good, page of that. especially like as a writer, he, I think he breaks every really writer 101 rule. I mean, you know, I get my hand slapped or would get my hand slapped writing, like stop using adverbs. So, you know, so, and there's one, I even wrote it down. Cause I was like, wait, what did he, what was his adverb? You know, um, Rose was getting dressed fumblingly. Like who uses mm, the word fumblingly? Like fumblingly. And, and yet, you get, it makes sense. There's so much of that. And you, he just, because that's what he cares about. He's not, he doesn't, it's almost like the story happens in spite of, of what he's talking about. And he's caught in these moments of watching someone get dressed or watching a brother and a sister interact or, with one or Mrs. Uh, Grace on the beach. You know, that part just, I remember him watching her and, and Carlos, her father was watching him watch her. Yep. And then you realize when you get to the end that that might, you know, he, he may, yep. he thought he knew what was going on and this all changed that that's yep. probably not what was going on, yep. but that part, and those are the, that's why the reread is awesome because see, this is what I hate about, but that's why we just go on these tangents. We are talking about the book, like, <laughs> like other people, you just got to read the book. Right. right. Um, but the, the, the thing about this book is you find something out at the end that changes his, me you know, he has this memory that's not perfect. He thinks he has it all together. Right. And then really it's all, most of it's turned on its head. Right. You know? Right. Um, it, and so when you go through it a second time, I try to look through it. You try to look through it from that new perspective. Right. Um, and it does change it quite a bit. Well, and but he speaks, you're so right there with him that it's, it's jarring those moments that all of a sudden you realize, <laughs> oh, what? You know, he, where he corrects himself or something else comes up where they, they counter because he's so so much like an older person who's telling you a story he's so sure that right. what he's saying is right and he's so and and that's the thing you think anybody with that level of detail anybody that's that invested in the in the minutia of these moments has to be completely right and accurate and then you realize oh he's completely right and accurate but he's also telling the the a story through the filter of what an 11 year old boy i mean that, like that misreads he, everything um, right. essentially so, and yeah yeah there's there's i can see where and i was actually surprised i i was i was a, a bit in before i was like oh wait let me learn a little bit about who i'm reading about like i thought this read i was looking i'm doing this i'm looking at my bookcase over here to me he feels very much like I'm trying to look at somebody on my bookshelf that I could compare him to mm -hmm. like 
like I have Lolita, I have Nabokov over there. I have like, like he feels like even a generation or two older than as an author than Banville is. He feels like Fitzgerald. I mean, just I agree. It's just a very different type of storytelling than um, what we're used to. Were, yep. Today. Yeah, than most 99% of the books I read, right? He's he's different. Um, do you watch Peaky Blinders? No. No, okay. Well, this is just a side thing. His, their lead actor, Kieran, I can't think of his last name. I was doing my research on the, the on Banville too behind, beforehand. And I'm a big fan of the show and he's a ba- the main actor. And he just, I just found a clip on YouTube, just him talking about Banville. He's his favorite author in this, yeah. event, which was, uh, uh, for those of you that watch Peaky, Peaky Blinders, you'll know, you'll know my excitement, but just kidding. <laughs> Doesn't he? One more thing it, for me to write down to do. Uh, Peaky Blinders, not to go off on the too big. It's a um, it's a show about Irish gangsters in, they're I guess more gypsy gangsters in I uh England, Liver not Liverpool, Manchester, at the turn of nineteen twenties maybe. Okay. But it's it's on Nef- it's done so well, so well. The the writing, the cinematography, the characters, it's What's phenomenal. Going? Netflix. Netflix. All right. Yeah. So you got to check it out. And I think it comes from like BBC four, same okay. channel that did uh, Downton Abbey. So if that says anything. Well, and that, and so I disappoint everybody left and right because people talk about television all the time. And I'm like, nope. I don't, you know, and then those are the same people who are like, how do you read so much? I'm like, I don't there you know. go. I don't watch Although, TV. I do have to confess where I feel like the last six months of you know, being at home, like I have so many people that are like, I've read so much more than I've ever read before. And I've done, I'm like, I, the discovered, opposite. I discovered television and I've basically done nothing but watch crap television, not even the good stuff. Well, some no. really good stuff. But I like, watch crap stuff too. Just so, I mean, I'm just, I didn't grow up a, a TV watcher. Uh, my parents are readers. I, um, my parents were divorced, but like, so in one home, I was an only child. So it was just me there. So like that's what you did you read like right. i didn't i didn't that's grow awesome. up watching a ton of tv so i i'm constantly i feel like an old lady out of the loop <laughs> i've always done and i don't know where i got reading i was the only one in my family that read and still same way i i started when i was young and i always had a book um, but i always watched tv too it was always a pretty good balance um, now you said that you was it just for banville or do you tend to not watch movie versions of books you've read I think it's just, I, I, uh, I don't know. It just seems like I, I look at the movie and I try to make a decision whether I think it's right. I, I think it's my feeling about the book too. Like this book, I just have a feeling. I don't know if I want to see it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, there was another uh, book that I love uh, atonement by um, yeah. I love that book. Did you read uh, that book? Atonement. Uh, Ian Mc, McGuire. Ian, Mc, yes. I started to say you and McGregor. Yeah. I was like, wait, no, that's an actor. Um, I love I that book. Wait, hold on. I'll tell you. Well, I won't. It's Ian a, somebody. Ian, um, yeah. Oh, this and, is embarrassing. I know, me too. I'm like, um, uh, maybe it's not Ian. Maybe that's why I'm getting thrown off. It is. It is Ian because it's not Ewan. McEwen? It's not. Um, you got to find that. I'm yeah. trying to like read through my bookshelf here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thing is, though, I, yeah. I read that book i love that book i want to do a, a book club on that book um, Beautiful. it's so luscious um, it, and it reminds me of this book a little bit you know a little bit there's it, there are pages of description like melancholy in to it yeah yeah <laughs> but that that movie is excellent yes they did yeah. a phenomenal yeah. I, I remember like watching Rocky, that movie right? with somebody what sir Ronan was the girl i don't uh, maybe i don't know who that is <laughs> But I, I I remember getting done with it and saying they did phenomenal job, phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think it's just whether I feel like it's going to be all right or not because like this book, I, I don't think they can do it. But I thought that with Atonement, so I don't. Right. Know. And it looks like there's good actors in it, so maybe maybe I'll look at uh, it. Yeah, I yeah. Well, what about the book? You read a ton. Um, and, and one of the questions I sent to you is for people that are new. You're not just getting this description. Uh, you're not just getting these difficult words but you're getting this, um, he's going through, the layers of the book are 
him going back to his childhood at this beach with his family, the Graces. Like literally, physically going back. Yeah. yeah, and he physically goes back there. So that's the present. So he goes back in time. He goes back in the present to kind of hash that all out. And then he goes back to the not too distant uh, past where his wife, Anna, passed away. Right. Right. So you have these three narratives going on mm -hmm. and he gives you no warning. How did you find that? Were you okay with that? Was it annoying? Was it did you like the way he did it what did it you was, think about that again it felt so true to the nature of the storytelling so it didn't it didn't bother me there definitely were moments where I mean because I feel like in some instances it was literally it wasn't even a, a, a break on the page it was <laughs> like one sentence was was right. happening during this time and and the following sentence was either a, a flashback right. or brought you back to the present um but somehow somehow it worked and it just it felt right for our narrator it felt right for for I agree. somebody who's who's older who's in mourning who's going through i mean he's he's obviously at a place in his life where he's he's completely retrospective and he's i mean he's he's evaluating everything and so it it felt it felt natural to the course of how he would conduct conversation that at, at, he would he would be bouncing back and forth. And so for him to take us kind of on that that path as as outside participants, just it felt right. It did, natural is the word. I, I mean, the second time I remember going through the book, the first time I'm like, whoa, I got to kind of I got to get used to this. Right. Mm -hmm. And And I did. And it was fine. It was OK. I didn't respect it as much the second time through. I'm like the art of being able to do that to imagine how the mind works right. and flows yeah. is it's crazy difficult. I mean, yeah. he is, we talked about this, he is a, a, a writer that is not of this generation. It seems it's, it's, it's old school, but the way he was able to do that, where it doesn't give you a headache. I don't know. Have you ever read Faulkner? I love, yeah. I love Faulkner. Yeah. I, I, if I have to pick a favorite art uh, author, it probably is Faulkner. Oh, yeah. But he is so one where he what? I said, that's so pretentious of you. It, well, <laughs> it, no, it's because it's so difficult. I've only read right, three know, of his so books. Like no, but you're right, though. It sounds yeah, pretentious Faulkner. because you think every you, you think, oh, everybody say Faulkner. But I've only read three of his books. They're yeah. the damnedest thing, the most difficult thing ever. You feel like you've accomplished something when you, when you get when you get done, but but they are so so good. Yeah, I mean so so good as far as the storytelling and then the flow. Right. Um, but his flow is, I think that he nails it. Where Faulkner, there's no you. I, they actually create a, a book. I think the Sound and the Fury. They create a, a publication of the book where actually the different characters and stories are all color coded because you almost oh, yeah. need that. Right. Right. You would, you would not need that with this book in any, in, no. in no sense. And it, I, but I, I mean, that's also, you know, this is told entirely through one point of view. We that's don't true. really get any, any firsthand. We, we have no idea. We don't, we don't know anything about, I mean, I don't know how much we're allowed to like talk about, Thank you know, what, the, the twist or what yeah, happened. No, I think we can. I think by this point too, especially. You know, there's, these, yeah. there's these other children, there's Chloe and, and Miles, these other kids. We, and, and, and the inconceivable happens and we have no insight right. other than his perspective, other than Max's perspective. We know nothing about their life. We know nothing about what they've experienced, what types of, I mean, we know from his description that Chloe is bent toward you know, she's got kind of a nasty streak. She's got, and it's like, yeah. okay, but is that just a typical kind of bully preteen or right. is there something much deeper and much But heavier? she's so sweet to her brother. Right. So sweet. I mean, they, well, and she will do anything for him. He's mute. He doesn't talk much, but she protects him. They are connected as one. You're right. She is. But even him, she, I mean, she picks, I mean, she's physical with him. You right. know, he talks Jumps about like, I figured right. like, almost like the roper, you know, like, I mean, she, she'd pick on him until he, he cried, which right. of course, like, that's what, what siblings do. But, you know, every single thing that we get in this book, everything comes through Max, Right. everything. There's no, 
outside filter, right? I mean. No, and you're right. And I think that's what makes it so interesting. I think that's what makes me at the end pause and really just kind of put the book down. Like, obviously it's horrendous what happens and you're just shocked, you know? And like I said, we can mention it or not mention it, but um, <laughs> you're shocked to death. It's sad. You can't believe that just happened. But really then you're just like, wait a minute, was this, did, was this talked about? What was going on that we don't know about? Like you, you said, right. you know, they didn't like Rose, their right. nanny. Right. Did they know the truth that we find out later? Right. I don't, I don't. And, and even if they did, you, you know, what, would that knowledge in and of itself be enough to drive them out in, right. in the water? And, and that's the thing. We just, we don't know. We get, even only, Max only gets one glimpse at, at the, you know, these, this, these aren't the kids that he grew up with. These aren't the people that he spends all of his time. I mean, his, his knowledge of them and their family unit and their interaction is completely tunnel vision and it's exclusive to this you know, this one summer. Right. Um, it, the other thing then goes, did they mean to do it? Right. And did, does he mean to do it later? Right. You know, right. Right. Like, like, was it intentional in both cases or unintentional in both, but one gets saved or, you know, that's the other thing that, that throws me in, I guess the single perspective allows that to happen is you're questioning and that's what makes a good book a good book is right. when you when keep you thinking about know. all this stuff yeah. when you close right. it is did they mean to really have that happen or were they just angry and er uh, and then they get out that far in the ocean and they're like, like oh and shit. that's and but and that's what's so fascinating about this is that i feel like what we're learning is that max has carried that exact I mean, how frustrating it is as a reader or not, not frustrating, but you know, you, you have those moments where you're thinking through it and then eventually you let it go and you pick up another book or you, you go do right. something else, you know, this but he's lived with it. He's right. He's lived with that question and he gets to the very end, you know, when he's, when he's, I feel like he's got these questions on the tip of his tongue and he really wants to ask Rose, you know, do you, I mean, what do I you think? think? Right. Right. Do you think that they did it on purpose? Do you think that they like, she's somebody who could have given him different perspectives. She could have maybe not given him the exact answers, but given him another, and, and he doesn't ever, he doesn't ever ask. You know, and that's funny. I, I never thought about that until you just brought it up, which is why I do these things. <laughs> he could have went back to the, the house and that could have been question number one. I mean, he could have sat down with her. Right. The book, the book could be a conversation of him and Rose. But one of the cool things, so so one, that would have let a lot out. But the other thing is, we as a reader, miss, correct me if I'm mistaken, we don't know Mrs. Vavasor is Rose. Not until no, I figure, like, they, he drops, there's so, he drops many, some hints. There's so yes. many hints. And then it was like, there's a hundred, what, 195 pages in the book. And on page one, set, I was so proud of myself because I never figure anything out. <laughs> so this is what, this is what made me suspicious. Everybody else, even the parents, even as a kid, we know Carlo's name. We know Constance's name. Like he gives everybody their first name, even if he calls them Mr. and Mrs. Grace. Right. Miss Vassar, oh. he calls her that through the whole thing. And I was like, well, that feels interesting. And he Rose. Never, he never shares her name. And oh. Rose, we never get her last name. And then on page 173, bottom of page 173, it says, Miles scrawled in chalk at the gatepost on the foot path outside the gate rv loves cg, CG. And i was like it's the v like her last name so i was like that took me the her. second reason you got yeah. the first reading that took me the second well, reason i'm very smart you are you're, you're on top of things and I then i wrote here i wrote <laughs> he knows i wrote on here he says miles knows the truth <laughs> and i wrote connie and carlos mm -hmm. so that was so i didn't even do the last name so rv wait that was so Rosie. Vass so you knew, right, but did you figure out? Oh, that CV was was Connie. Not, no, mm -mm. yeah, not until nope. Didn't even think no. about it. I was so proud of myself for figuring out <laughs> that it was Rosie. The Vavasor, right? Yeah. I didn't even. Nope. I think I skipped over. I didn't even look at that. That's funny. That's crazy. Yeah. I was looking at the CV. 
Um, but then on the next page, which is interesting, um, they go into it. Uh, what's he say? Strange tide. I was in some consequence of a uh, He says, after all, why would I be less suspicious than the next melodramatist to the tale's demand for a neat closing twist? So he tells us what he's going to do 50 pages before he does it. He right. said, after he gives us the initials, he says, I'm going to give you a twist after yeah. this. And he does that. He does that several times. And this is a good time for me to tell you where I think after the third time through the book, <laughs> I find out where I think he tells us what, what he's trying to do here. This is just a, it, let me just go. It's a dream that he has. You may remember this. And it's really early. It's on page 18, which is why I think when you get to later in the book, you forget right. obviously about this. Um, a dream it was that drew me here. In it, I was walking along a country road, that was all. It was in winter at dusk, or else it was strange, sort of dimly radiant night, the sort of night that there is only in dreams and wet snow was falling. I was determinedly on my way somewhere, going home, it seemed, although I did not know what or where exactly home might be. There was open land to my right, flat and undistinguished, with not a house or hovel in sight and to my left, a deep line of darkly luring trees bordering the road. The branches were not bare despite the season, and the thick, almost black leaves drooped in masses, laden with snow that had turned to soft, translucent ice. Now, I'm not done, but I, I, I was going to cut that out, but I wanted people to see what we were talking about with your description there <laughs> as he's pulling you in, right? right? Something had broken down a car, no, a bicycle, a boy's bicycle, for it was being at that age I am now, I was a boy as well, a big awkward boy, yes, and on my way home, he keeps saying home, it must have been home, or somewhere that had been home once, and that I would recognize again when I got there. I had hours of walking to do, but I did not mind that, for this was a journey of surpassing but inexplicable, inexplicable importance. So he's saying, this is what I said, I think he's describing the book because he's saying, I'm going back in this dream, not everything's perfect, right. he's imagining it, but it's it feels like home. It's somewhere that I'm used to. Um, it's important. And then he says, uh, I was calm in myself, quite calm and confident too, despite not knowing rightly where I was going, except that I was going home. I was alone on the road. So he has to do this by himself. And then I'm skipping ahead. That was all there. All there was in the dream. The journey did not end. I arrived nowhere and nothing happened. I was just walking there, bereft and stalwart, endlessly trudging through the snow and the winding uh, the wintry gloaming, but I woke in the murk of the dawn, not as I usually do these days, but with the sense of having been flayed of yet another layer of protective skin during the night, but with the conviction that something had been achieved or at least initiated. So I obviously third time through the book and you read that and you know everything is going on. And for me, that hit me like something you wouldn't hit the first right. time. You know right. what I mean? So at the end, you're asking, wow, why did he go back? What did he learn? And that was it. He had to something, he had to wrap it up. You know, he had to wrap something up and uh, shed, get rid, shed that old skin, whether he knew what was going on or not, and feel finally at ease with, with all of it. Home, I guess. So here, uh, here's a question for me that now, and again, it's, it's so fresh. At what point? At what point did he realize or did he already know that Rosie was in the home, that she was the whatever you want to call her? Like, yeah, the, the did he know that when he, he went, like, is that part of why he went because she was there at the house or yeah. so was there, correct me if I'm wrong again, and I should know this. I think him and his daughter went once before he went and stayed there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? yeah so he yes he went with claire yeah, yeah so they took a drive and she's like annoyed but he wants to see everything right so maybe i guess in my mind that was his, she was dropping him off there oh maybe no that but could maybe be. not no just yeah that that could very well be maybe she was driving around because I, I know they went to different places he was right. trying to show her and she wasn't really right. into it um, right i read that as that was he was you know that that makes to, sense that makes more sense because she wouldn't take him until after his wife's death. Right. So maybe she was dropping him off and he was so, just, they were doing that drive. 
Yeah, That'd I don't know. Thing. I'd like to go back and kind of reread that section where he goes. And I mean, I don't remember there being any, um, even if it was subtle, like any moment of, like now I wish I could, I could go back and find where when he arrives at the house or when he calls, he did, to, I do remember, it's coming back. I wish I would have marked these pages better. I do remember him saying something about his name. Like he introduced himself and she said, I know who, you, like whatever her version of like, I know who you are. Right, and, but there was really not a lot of warmth or it. recognition between right. the two of them at all. You, right. I, you, you go through the whole book essentially saying, oh, well, it didn't mean anything essentially right. that they knew each other because you don't think they had any relationship until right. the very end. He like, doesn't do anything to give away who she is. Right. There's um, that. And then there was another, there was another part that, that stood out to me that I, I don't know if I missed the, the hint. It was a conversation between, I think him and Anna. And she is annoyed like she says something about like, oh shoot, I'm now I'm gonna get this all wrong. Nice. Something about he'd gotten a letter or he'd gotten something and she's like, why are they calling you Max? That's not your name. Right, that was his mom. His, his mom. mom said, yeah, his mom, that he didn't have a great relationship right. with. And he went to visit her, right. Yeah, I, do, I don't, we never find out. And I don't, as far as I know, we don't find anything out about that, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it took it caught me completely off guard because that because I started to think like, oh gosh, has he something happened in his childhood and has he completely changed his name like like changed well, his, his whole or, life? Like, yeah, no, I as we far never as I know, hear anyone address him as Max or like we don't hear Chloe call him Max. We don't hear any. I don't think do we? No, and his whole life though is him trying to escape his home and his life around that home, you know, his, his uh, state of, I don't know, uh, uh, social class, right? right? That's his whole life. So when he meets the great, so, so my, um, my only guess is um, he didn't act like a person different though. So I, I don't want to say he was trying to be fake. He was always trying to jump that scale. His home life was horrible. He always right. em was embarrassed that he lives in these sh I think they were called chateaus the chalets Maybe. chalets yeah. right chalets yeah. in yeah. Ireland. they were obviously where the poor people were in ireland in, in this uh vacation yeah. city and he was embarrassed of that and the graces who were coming to visit he was they were a little bit more upper class than he was and he wanted to forget about that life and be with them he mm -hmm. found love with the mother at first then right. the daughter right but then it's interesting we find out later that he's does that again. He he wants to jump classes. He marries his wife. Right. Um, sounds like they have a pretty good relationship. But he openly admits that one of the things he was drawn to was uh, her wealth and her family's wealth. And then right. he ends up wealthy. But I, I that that's that's true. And I forgot. I wanted to again. I mark a thousand things and I want to talk about them as I'm reading. Right, and, then, and that yeah. was one of them. I don't know. I make notes as I go, and then I'm like, wait, I yeah, I can't keep track of all of that. But that was no, that, that was a big one. Is his mother and him who had a, a, a pretty bad relationship who know, know his father was abusive. They sound like a, a part of their time. He was living with her. They were trying to get by together. Right. It must've gotten worse because then, After yeah, she's back. like, yeah. Why are they calling you max? And that was it. That's all we hear. Right. I mean, I, and I, that's the thing. I feel like she like flat out says that's not your name. And I was like, <laughs> right. but they shouldn't give another name. She doesn't say he doesn't give any explanation. Yeah. Uh, but see, gosh, to be a writer and just to throw something like that in, <laughs> that's genius. Which, I mean, but again, that's what, what I say. Like, I feel like he, he breaks, he breaks all these rules. I mean, it's see, like, I don't know the rules because no, I've never, I that's there's awesome. No, there's but no you know, rules. I mean, for you know, no, 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 you do though. You go to school, you learn the rules. That's awesome. And that's, that's one of the things, you know, the, those things. And that's, I wish I knew the things because. Like you said, that makes good authors great. But then sometimes if you break well, them the right way, if you can he, do it the right way, then they just, make you better. So, I mean, like, and, and st I mean, even as an adult, even sharing my writing, you know, I'm, I'm part of different little writing groups and sharing my writing with them, you know, I, I get my hand smacked on, you know, if you're using, generally speaking, 
if you're using adverbs, you're not doing a good enough job being in the, you're, you're not creating that. You're not, you're, you're telling, not showing. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, I do. Yeah. You have to, and, and he just turns that on his head. Cause he's like, I don't care about showing you anything. This entire thing is a telling it's, right. it's one man's telling of his. And so to, to use the language like he does is, is so purposeful. I mean, you, I feel like he must have slaved over every word. I mean, I just imagine <laughs> him sitting and thinking like, what's the exact right way to describe how she was getting dressed right. fumblingly. Right. Like not hey, see, a word that's awesome. that most of us would come up with. And, and most, you know, writers would turn that around to, to, to and and make it into a full paragraph of showing you know she stumbled she she picked her you know like they right. would they would they would show and he's like f that no she was doing it fumblingly that's all like and, I see and, i love that you know that that's awesome and like, yeah and but you read it and you're like it, that that it one sense. word puts this whole you know scene into into context and he does it over and over and over again into who chloe is too you get a better picture of who it is yeah who she is yeah all of them um there's another page i'm just flipping through too just his memory and i thought was was crazy uh he was a couple times he did this where he said wait this is wrong wait yeah. i remembered it wrong right i thought that was really cool too is that you can he's trying so hard to remember something and yet he's like, wait a minute, I don't think that's is right. And he, at one point he said, right. when he wait. talks about like the lighting being off, he talks a ton right. about light, ton yep. about light, but exactly like he'll talk about something and like, or like after the movie, after the, like there was a, that's what it was about the kiss, how the kiss came. Wow. Right. Good memory. And then, yep. and he's, and that's what I'm saying. Like as a reader, you're, you're fully invested with him. You're right there. And, and you're, you know, he's created this entire scenario and you're right there and then he just he's like oh wait no that's wrong and you're like what? yeah right how do you do that <laughs> and yet if, that's the thing if you've ever had a conversation with a, a narrator with somebody who's who's winding you down these paths like that's what happens, happens. you just that's kind of what happens ask, but, but you don't read him, that in a book and for him to recognize that okay wait hold on a second I, you know I, this is so vivid i would i would you know i'd sign an affidavit that this is exactly how it happened Oh, but wait, we came out of the movie and it would have that been can't be right. And bit I a remember different day. the way the sunlight was hit, like, which is, that's how, I mean. That's real. I do that all the time. Like, wait a minute. Yes. No, that night we went with my dad to dinner. It couldn't have yeah. been the same. Can't it put it. Right. But they and seem they, like the same day. Like, wait, but this person was here and they couldn't have been here if this, I mean. But you don't see it in books. And that's what makes you, right. and, and I can tell, I, I, I don't. I was talking to somebody not too long ago. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this book for the book club. I love this book. Well, what makes you love it? I honestly, and maybe you can help. I don't know what why I love it. It's a great, like you said in earlier, you know, the description's great. The writing's great. And I love that, of course. The story is, it's good. I don't know. Maybe it's just because there are so much of that. I don't know why I love this book, which is kind of frustrating. I to think say that that. there are just, there are just, authors that that strike that tone with you and yeah. that's the thing. like i like you talked about faulkner i'm so cliche but like i'm a huge f scott fitzgerald fan okay. like i he's those are some of the only books that i reread and he's very flagrant with his lane you, i mean it, mm -hmm. it feels you can tell that you're reading something this felt a little bit like that to me it felt more like something that i would have thought oh this was written in the twenties or this, what, you know, like right. this is something it just that generation of writers, much, right. It, it felt much older. I, and I mean, that's, I think that's the beauty of it is, is that who cares, who cares right. what it yeah. is that, that connects. You're right. I'll be curious. I'd like to read something else by him to see what now, you know, it's interesting. And I don't know what my weird fascination with old men is. <laughs> you probably look into that, but like <laughs> I read a man called Uwe. All right. Frederick Bachman and yep. like oh, yeah. I I could not have fallen in love I've read now almost everything that he's written I love his writing style I love the way he just and it was a completely different type of person but also kind of similar to this not the mm -hmm. same level of melancholy because he right he adds much much more lightness to that story than than Banville has here mm -hmm. um even though it's of, I mean, actually, it's very similar. It's a man who's just it lost is. his wife, and it's right. and he, you know, it's there's there's trauma. I mean, it's it's 
it's so funny that when I would first start telling people like, oh, I just read this book and I just love it so much. And people are like, oh, what's it about? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you got this old man, yeah. his wife yeah. just died and he's trying to commit suicide. And everyone's like, oh, okay, yep. that sounds awful. And what else is complicated? I just, right before, the book that I read before this is a book called The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, which was- Never heard of it. Another, it was actually somebody, a, a, I think like a childhood friend of mine had, had recommended it and said, oh, I think, I think it was, oh, if you like a man called Uwe, you'd like this. Same. Right. It's an older man on, and I was, I had to be careful because I was getting, I was <laughs> in a, a completely different story, completely different man, but like I was getting right. his narrative tied up sometimes with Max's mm -hmm. when I was like, wait, isn't, I thought his relationship with his mom was okay. And I'm like, wait, nope, wrong. Nope. Book. Like, no, I needed a palate cleanser there in the middle. So again, not sure why I'm just reading book after book after book about. Uh, uh, believe me, <laughs> I, I know when you're reading a lot, that happens. Isn't it, it crazy? I'll oh. say the same thing. I'll be like uh, any subject and I'll say, wait, the last three books I've read, they seem, it's almost like somebody directed me towards them, but right. they are totally random. Right. And I don't know what brought this up, but you made me think of, um, have you read the My Struggle or do you know about the My Struggle series by Nausgaard? No. So this guy, and it makes me think of that because he's an, he's an older man. I think that's probably what did it. And he's foreign. And so the, the Uwe thing brought me there, but uh, Carl von Nausgaard, I think that's how you pronounce it. He wrote uh, an autobiography, essentially. It's seven freaking books long. Oh my gosh. He's from Norway. Um, and it's called my struggle. And it is, I've only made it through the first two books, but um phenomenal i mean yeah. phenom but but heavy dense um he it's a lot it, and i think you might appreciate it because just having a writer background he obviously he's pretty much writing about him writing these books while he's going through and raising a family yeah. and he goes through his single life and then i only got through him getting married having a kid but then there's six more books and that, that would give you six books of, of struggle right from that point. He's like, oh yeah, but, my, now let me, now let me tell you about my struggle. <laughs> right. But it's, it's, it's overwhelming. I don't, I, I couldn't imagine somebody reading all of his books, but um, I guess there's somebody out there, but he is, I guess the number one thing in Norway, as far as writing goes really? in the last 10, 15 years since these things have come out, but definitely something to check out. And I probably I'll have to do a book club on one of those one day. Well, and it sounds like you suffer. Like there are so many times, like I have a whole bookcase right here and I've tried to get better in recent mm -mm. years about just holding on to books that like I would recommend or I, but I read so much that sometimes people are like, Oh, have you read this? I'm like, yes, I loved it. And they're like, what's it about? I'm like, no, idea. no right. All I can remember is that, yes, I loved it. There Thank you so for saying that books that I oh. can like remember why, like what it is yep. about them that, that stuck. Yep. Thank you. Cause I, I was uh, the last one we were talking about um, in my last book club, I was talking to the guy and I said, Hey, I have this problem. I love a book one through it. I can tell you every detail, maybe a couple of days. And I said, but if you give me a year or two later and yeah. ask me about it, I can give you maybe three. I forget so much. He's like, no, yeah. I don't do that. I'm like, Oh shit. I got to get checked by the doctor. Nope. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and I think, I really do think it's just a, a side effect of, of mm -hmm. reading a lot and, and being so invested. And, and if I had conversations like this, after every book I read, right. I'd probably, I, you know, I'd probably be more connected, but that's the thing. Exactly. Like you were saying at the beginning, I'm a little bit more isolated with my reading. Jay's not yeah. a, a big reader. There's some things that he really enjoys and, you know, certain, certain types of books. Um, but he doesn't, he doesn't go, you know, he doesn't fly through them. So I don't have that immediate connection of, um, you yeah, know, my I've... dad reads like most of my book recommendations come to me from my dad. That's awesome. Um, the last one that I got, which, and I listened to this podcast was the road, like I came home for Christmas. I was in still in New York. I came home from Christmas for Christmas. And dad was like, we aren't having Christmas until you've read this book. And it was <laughs> the road by Cormac. Yeah. And I was like, this is the book you give your daughter to read at Christmas, <laughs> at Christmas time? time. Right. Like, exactly. I want to die. A slow <laughs> death. So like, sad. But, right. But like, but it's, I mean, same, but that just, you know, those books that you just fall into, mm -hmm. And even now I'm like, I, yeah, I could tell you a little bit about that book, but it's like that stuck with me because I, I have that connection to it, you know, talking through it with, with somebody else who had read it. And that's maybe awesome that's that why relationship. book clubs exist, right? Because you want, 
in, you want to let it out. You right. You want to be able to like bring these people to life and to ask them questions. And when you don't have that, you just kind of you get to the end and you close it and you sit with it for a second and then you move on to what's next. You know, and am I missing something? You know, like you get a couple of things that I didn't think of, which happens almost every time. Like you thought of stuff that I didn't think of, which right. really just makes me feel like, okay. And then at the end, like you said, for the first time, I feel like, oh, shoo, I can wrap this up. <laughs> and it feels good to- And to I'm like, it. I have to go read it again. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. But you know, um, I have nobody really, I have one guy that I teach with that never read and we hung out every day. We'd actually work out during our, our plan bell at school. And I said, start, let's do a book. And I eased him in. Now he's a, a big reader. Yeah. We get to talk a little bit, but he's the only person really in my life, which is why, you know, like you, uh, everybody that I do this kind of book club with are not people that I talk to or see, you know, they're mm -hmm. spread all around the country and they're right. people that we kept this connection because of this. And, but you can't do that on a, you know, like you said, a daily basis. You're not running right. into them and saying, right. oh, let's talk about this. Right. So it makes it, and that's why it, it, and the other thing that made me do this was um, during quarantine, like you went to TV, I, I, I came into, I don't know what it is. You probably had the same thing I did. I don't know if it was anxiety or something. I couldn't read. I couldn't read as much as I was. My, my, I have no attention span right now. Right. I, I, yes, I, that's, I struggled. And that's why I think I struggled even more a little bit with this one because it, it required so much attention. And I just, exactly. I don't know if it's anxiety. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it was, just but I, I do this. I would look at my book and then I'd be like, I'm not going anywhere. And yeah. I did that for freaking three weeks of quarantine. I'm like, I'm at home. I can't go anywhere. This is where I should be reading a ton. Yeah. And my mind can't do it. And that's why I started I this. I'm I like, all right. Anything. Yes. Well, then I'll talk to people about books. Not only did it did then talk to people about books, but then when we decide on a book, it, I'm not just sitting there reading. I have to do it. Right. Not, I mean, I'm enjoying it, but at the same time, <laughs> I have a goal that I yeah. have to do. Yeah. So that got me back into it too. But yeah, without quarantine, uh, yeah, this would have never gotten going. And it was just, I'm glad you felt the same way. Not glad, uh, but you know what I mean? And you felt, the, you understand <laughs> yeah, what yeah, I was going I through. Number, no, I'm, I'm right there with you that, that I haven't just been able to like lose myself in, and, and some of that for me has been like, I've been working from home. Some of that for me is just, I've had people in my space yeah, for six that's months true too. that I that's haven't. True and so, yeah. but even, but it's like, even more than that, I can close the door and I can shut my family. Yeah, I can shut something my family was out. different. Yeah, right. but it, yeah, it no. has been it's it's been I mean, I notice it even trying to read an article on the Internet or something like I I my attention span is it's different. Is it's different. way different. Yeah, it's gone. Have you well, you brought up Cormac McCarthy and you probably know from that thing I, I named my son Cormac. I love that yep. name and I love Cormac McCarthy. I've read almost I love everything. That you compromised but his. on the spelling, right? Like yeah, that was I had to. <laughs> and he's a, I think he's appreciative of that yeah. too now. Um, have you read anything else by him? No. All right. Uh, no. Sutri. Sutri no. is this a book very much like the book we just read. It's it's fat though but the descriptions in it are amazing as long as you know they're coming. What a phenomenal book. And yeah. then, he, and then his other books are phenomenal, but they're, you know, obviously he's pretty dark in, in, in some ways, but I'd say if you ever want to pick up another one of his, it's, it's Soot Tree, S-U-T-T-R-E-E. -E. Really great book, really phenomenal book. So um, thank you. you. We've wait, come to our time. Wait, what do you read? That's like light and fun. Like, um <laughs> you know i don't know you know because yeah you know because okay you don't read a lot of nonfiction, do you i so that was my goal last year at the beginning or like last year for this year was to up my nonfiction intake so i have been because i realized i'm like oh my gosh i've been keeping these lists for years of all these books and it's it's just all fiction so i actually have been trying beginning of this year to infuse nonfiction in so that's where I'm at. I'm always doing nonfiction. Obviously, I'm a social studies teacher, so I'm trying. I have to keep up on that. And so really any literature I'm reading is my light, whether it's light or not. It's definitely lighter than the nonfiction where I'm trying to keep all these facts right. in my head and in events and really I'm not trying to memorize, but something that I am trying to integrate and, and know about. So uh, any literature I read is light but you're right. It's not really light. It's because, <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't, I, um, 
I don't know. I've gotten so used to these books, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. that that I like that. Have you ever read Murakami? He's coming to my. I'm just looking at Murakami. You ever uh, read him? Uh-uh. Crazy, uh, good stuff, but not. Anyways, not like I'm gonna have to send you a list. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just well, to try out here and there. Yeah, I'm just gonna send you a bunch of like smut. Yeah, I need. To, you know, right. somebody gave me some. I, I can't see them. Somebody actually told me had that conversation with me, and they oh, yeah. sent me three books and I cannot remember the author, but very light, supposed to be very funny. And I just haven't gotten to him yet. I should probably pick <laughs> You're like, up. no, thanks. I'd rather just read about the apocalypse. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, thank you so much. This was fun. I thank hope you. you had a good time. I had a blast. Awesome. Will you do it? Well, you already got, you're already doing it again. I am. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a, yeah. Well, I don't even know what book it is though. It's the Poisonwood Bible. Okay. We talked about Are that. You- but then I didn't know if you were if you're good with that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love Barbara King Silver. So. Okay. So we're going to do uh, that book in, I'm thinking around February, March. Okay. Does that sound good? I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I will. And that one I've actually already read, but oh, I will yeah. enjoy rereading. Are you sure? Re- Cause we can. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. I would like to reread. I've, I've read, read it too. It. And I want to reread yeah. it too. That's one of the reasons yeah. I'm doing it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have Thanks, a good night. Mike. This was so fun. Good. Take care. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.